Welcome back, everybody. Last year, we probably spent more time in our kitchens than we ever could have imagined. And if you are experiencing kitchen fatigue, now might be the perfect time to reset and to practice a more mindful approach to cooking. Here to show us the art of enlightened cooking is Chef Sang Kim. Hi, Sang. Hi, ladies. Hi, Jesse. Hi, hi, Lenny. How are you? We're both great. And saying, I'm just going to come out and say it. You're an exceptional human being, and you always have this beautiful way of lifting our spirits. So with that in mind, will you start us off by explaining to us what enlightened cooking is? The enlightenment cooking is really the original farm-to-table cooking, right? It's based on the dharmic concept of ahimsa, which means like nonviolence, right? And it flows from, in, in the Far East, it flows from the Mahayana Buddhist tradition. Simple preparation, age-old techniques, fire, fermentation, curing, a little bit of light oil cooking, right? And then, of course, all aspects of food preparation, from planting and harvesting to foraging and cooking, eating everything, all mindfully connected one to the other. That's enlightenment cooking. Ooh, this sounds so lovely. But are there things that we should avoid? Certain things we shouldn't use? Yeah, so there are the uh, five deadly sins um, uh, when it comes to <laughs> certain kind of pungent uh, flavor. So you're talking about leeks and garlic and onions and green onions and, you know, um, chives. And later on, especially in Korean cuisine, it was... Uh, red hot peppers. All right, Sang, so how do you practice enlightened cooking? I'll tell you how I practice it. I, clearly, I, I, I'm not a monk and I don't live out in a monastery, but um, the kind of practices that I put into use every single day involve the senses. So it's about touch, the way we're going to be molding Gemodaki today. It's about smell and savoring that. It's about breathing. And so, and it's also about being in a meditative state and prayer or grace. It's also about conscious uh, chewing. Yeah, there's no Netflix, like no multitasking. I was never very good at that to begin with. No, like getting, uh, filling yourself with fake news or, or reading gossip <laughs> blogs. Um, it's all about <laughs> focusing on your senses and being in that moment. Now, Sang, you're going you're gonna to guide us through the practice, but right now, Lainey and I get to get our hands dirty a little bit because we're actually mm -hmm. going to prepare something. Will you walk us through this? And what are we making anyway? So what we're making is my favorite variant on temple cuisine called ganmodaki, or ganmodaki. Okay? And basically what it is, is it's tofu, right? Novice monast uh, monks will go and they will make tofu really, really central to, to monastic cuisine. First of all, as you can see, what I've done is I've crumbled all of the uh, tofu and mixed in all of the, the, uh, the, the vegetables, the edamame, the shiitake mushrooms, and the carrot. Now, what we have to do is we, ha we have to make sure that we create a binding agent, and that binding agent is egg whites. A lot of people just put the yolk in it as well, but egg whites I find is much, much more cleaner. So take your egg whites, and I'd like you yep. to pour it into your mix there okay what i want you to do is i want you to just kind of mush it all together get everything all bound together okay oh that feels good we're going to stick our hands with oil you could use water as well and then what you're going to do is you're going to take imagine like a small we haven't been able to go out much so you guys probably forget what a golf ball si golf ball looks like but imagine uh, a ping pong ball or a billiard ball, somewhere in between a billiard ball and a ping pong ball size. And what I want you to do is I want you to start mushing it together into the shape of a hockey puck. So this is temple cuisine as it would have been born right out of um, Saskatoon, Canada during the middle of winter. <laughs> Once we're done making these hockey pucks, then you lightly fry them. That's right. So what I so I've got a nice uh, vegetable oil that's simmering right now, and I have put um, these uh, pucks in. Lainey and I are gonna uh, fry ours lightly, fry ours later. But you were kind enough to send us 
the finished mm -hmm. product, along with some other beautiful dishes. Will you take us through what you brought us? Sure. So these, Jesse, are, again, variations of temple cuisine. So we go back to, for example, the way, a different way in which uh, tofu is used. So you have agadashi tofu, which you'll find, you have to find it in every single Japanese restaurant menu in the appetizer section. So it's lightly battered, mm -hmm. right? You could use different types of flour for it. And then, of course, deep fried. And the tofu that's used is more of a medium firmness, whereas the one that we just did was um, extra firm. And it's okay. dashi, right? So what you're talking is bonito flakes, soy sauce, um, uh, there's some mirin in there, and then you're sprinkling. What I've done is I sprinkled it on top of it, bonito flakes, and some uh, nori, and it's sitting in a shallow pool of that sauce. The second thing is uh, is one of my favorites, and I like using more of an Italian style, rounder style of eggplant, and that's the nasu dengaku. Nasu dengaku is eggplant. Here I've, I've uh, grilled it. Mm. So that you get a nice sear on it and then I've roasted it a, a, a little bit and then what you're doing to finish it off is you're putting in this case I've used sweet miso paste you put the miso paste on top you sprinkle it with some sesame I cheated with green onion we're not supposed to eat that but I've cheated with the green onion you put it in a oven and you let it broil for uh, 10 minutes and it's just the best thing um, to eat when you're at home all by yourself and no one can come over. So, and then of course, brown rice, right? You can't have temple cuisine without unpolished brown rice. What the monastic tradition does is of course takes all kinds of dried beans, right? Black beans, mung beans, and then they'll take those dried beans and they'll just throw them into the rice and let it cook together with it. And so what you're getting is a really beautiful earthy quality in the in the in the rice all right saying we are ready to eat but before we do after enlightened cooking is there enlightened eating what we're going to do is i'm going to take you through a quick uh, meditation exercise with food i want you to breathe through your nostrils for four seconds hold for four seconds exhale through your mouth for four seconds and then i want you to bite into the ganmodaki and I'd like to see five very intentional bites, okay? And then just milk every single bite. Savor every bit of it for as long as you can. And that's how enlightened eating can feel. Now, because I meditate, uh, part of our practice is it's really, really important, the, the, the practice that I do in meditation, because it's, it's um, Tibetan-based. And one of the things is that when you're chewing and you're eating and you're swallowing, how do you corral that horse of, horses of thoughts that are trying to rush away from your mind, right? And so when you mm -hmm. focus like you would on breathing, on the chewing, but when you're focused on just chewing, then you can pull your, your thoughts in. And every once in a while, you know what we always do is when we chew and we're, we're eating and we're chewing, we're always chatting or we get preoccupied with something that's on TV and our minds race. And so we don't really, really deeply experience that connection that we need to have with that thing in, that's passing through our body. And so think of all of those distractions as wild horses that you're just simply trying to corral and Focus it into that piece you're biting into. Saying, thank you so much for enlightening us with your delicious food and enlightening us by just being you. And listen, Lainey's not going anywhere. She's busy eating. You don't go anywhere either because we're going to be right back.